I probably just put pen all over my flat. It's not proper. Are all the cameras on? Oh, is everything on? Yes. Oh. Alright, let's get started. One film. Daniel. I think our director is saying we should get started. <laughs> You can do that. Are we good? Uh, you did. That's great. Recording? <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. That's the signal. Uh. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 14 of Nights at the Round Table. I'm sitting here today with Eric, and we are discussing the book The Stand by Stephen King. Um, and since there's only two of us, I'm going to just jump right in with general impressions of the book. What did you think? Um, I've read it twice, once in high school and once about seven years ago, and I loved it. It, it was sad, depressing, scary, I hate having a cold now, <laughs> but it it was very entertaining. Okay, yeah, um, it was a good book. It didn't blow my socks off. Um, <laughs> so, I didn't find it spectacular. I, the first half of the book, I loved. I was incredibly fascinated by it. Um, I think it says a lot about me, I'm afraid, where I'm morbidly fascinated by the dissolution of society because of a super virus. Um, but after that point, I was just not as enthralled. I think it's a big shift about midway yeah. from disaster novel to pseudo-religious girl, girl, whoa, not girl, good versus evil. Freudian specifically <laughs> Freudian slip. Specifically um, biblical. Biblical, yes. Uh, which is, you know, I'm so saturated by it, it's not new or interesting for me. But which is, I think is why I was... It is interesting considering that uh, Stephen King is an agnostic and he doesn't... He, uh, pretty yeah. much every religious person he has in his books, other than this one, are evil. Like, if there's a priest in the Stephen King book, you know they're the bad guy. Oh yeah? Usually. Or at least they're not I haven't read that much Stephen King, to be honest. Well, then, yeah. Were there any characters? Sorry. Sorry, yes. Uh, <laughs> did, 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 did. Oh, this is going to be a lot of editing for you. Yes! This is going to be an editing nightmare. Okay. Or you could just keep it all like this. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It'll go viral. Just keep running through. Oh, I wish. Hey, uh, you were saying? I forgot. What were you going to ask? Was there a character that you liked or disliked? Uh, I was really fond of Freddy's dad. Okay. Um, which, of course, I mean, he got killed. Yay. Well, yeah, most of the Most everybody got killed, killed. yeah. Um, and I did like the, the hero, I guess he was the hero, Stu? Stu, Stu Redman? He was one of the main... He was two. one of the main guys. I um, liked him. He was, he was alright. Freddy was alright. But they, none of them were really... I, I'm going to show how strange I am. My favorite was the trash can man. Oh yeah, he was good. <laughs> so entertaining. He was, yes. Actually, that's true. He was. Um. I don't... Um, yeah, I didn't feel a strong connection to any of the characters, which is one of my big problems with Stephen King, which is why it's so hit and miss for me. I have read some of his stuff, um, the Dark Tower series, where I've been completely enthralled and loved it. And then most of his other stuff, I'm like, eh. See, there were two characters that I really associated with. Stu, for one, because he was just generally a nice guy. Yeah. And the kid that I can't remember his name. I want to call him Hamish, but that's not the right name. Harold Lauder. Yes, Harold. Because I read it when I was in high school. And oh, so okay. I kind of really associated with him, and then I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! No, no, bad! The same thing happened to me. Okay, I'm not alone. <laughs> Yeah, and, okay. You know, I think he might have done it on purpose because he knew that a lot of his audience were yep. would associate with him or with Franny to start with. Mm. And they have very different paths. Yeah, that's true, actually. And he did write Harold very well, I have to yeah. say. And I really liked mm, the old lady. Mother Abigail? Mother Abigail. Yes, nice and sassy. Yeah, yes, yeah, I enjoyed the sassy characters. Um, I also liked that she... Uh, for 108. Yeah. It was still one of the strongest women in the book. <laughs> it made me happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was a very good character, I have to yeah. admit. Um, one of the things that I liked a lot about, especially the beginning, in the disaster time, it, it's something that he probably was inspired by Windham, is the use of media. 
So they use a lot of news reports or people talking about what's happening that aren't the main characters. And it yeah. gives it a feeling of the way we would actually see the world. And this was before 2011, which is when I first noticed that, holy crap, we only see things through the media. Yeah. And in books, it's so rare. Normally, you just see it from one person's point of view who has a best friend who knows everything magically, and they tell them. But with this and all of Windham's stuff, it's all about the media. It's really interesting. Yeah. It is really interesting. Um, what was also really interesting was the misguided attempt to control the media. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And how it completely backfired. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, that whole the whole first half though was really good. I was super into the book, mm -hmm. and then afterwards, I was I, after that. I'm like, well, now I'm bored. <laughs> Society isn't crumbling. I'm bored. <laughs> so you like destroying things. Apparently, apparently, um. apparently. Uh, yeah. There were some parts of the society crumbling that were terrifying. There, yes. The the guy who had an appendicitis. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Mark. I think Mark. Was, was it Mark? That whole scene, I was like, "Oh my god!" Ah. Oh, and poor Stu. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's true, though. If the world were to suddenly collapse like that, we wouldn't know how to save people's lives. At all. Childbirth no. would suddenly become very, very dangerous. Much more dangerous than it already is. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I think, why I liked it so much. And mm -hmm. he wrote the crumbling of society so well. Yes. So well. Um, and how the virus spread. He wrote that so well. And it was, you could see all the mistakes. And you could also see that it didn't how, how um, those mistakes would probably be made mm -hmm. in actuality. Yeah, the, the disaster part was very, very realistic. Maybe that's one of the things that bugged you more about it, is that it went from more of a realistic disaster novel to a fantasy. Like, no, not really. No? no. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I loved all the dream stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. as soon as the two good camp, evil camp became a thing, I just lost interest. This wasn't a nearly as fascinating as everything else that came before it, which probably speaks more to me, I think, more about me than it does about the book, because yay destruction! <laughs> I really enjoyed the, um, the specialists coming out in the good town and rebuilding, and how that came about in comparison to the bad guys in Las Vegas that was like, bam, we have engineers that are forced to do it right away. Well, Not the other really town, forced, they went there. Yeah, they went there. And I also like the, the the split, like the different kinds of people. I think at one yeah. point he makes a joke that all the lawyers went to the other. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It was really interesting. Uh, it was also interesting about how, uh, because of this, the the atmosphere in Boulder, they were growing, mm -hmm. and then because of the fear and the uncertainty, they were and they were shrinking over the other side. And it was interesting how in Boulder they fought a lot. Like there's committees, and they would yell at each other, and. The, it, it sort of reminded me of um, several TV shows I've seen that have post-apocalyptic and then you have to build a society. The most recent is uh, The 100, uh, oh, okay. which is a CW teeny show. Oh, okay. Not really great, but there's also an old one in the 90s, post-war America. It'll come back to me later. Oh, Jericho. Jericho, yes, that's it. Thank you. Which was very much similar to the second half of this book, minus oh, yeah. the evil overlord trying to kill everyone. Yeah, well, Satan's imp, as he's yes. called in this book. Yeah. RF, RF. Who is, you see in almost every Stephen King novel that has a supernatural bad guy. This, this, is, where, where, this is where the first time he appears. Yes, but he shows up afterwards, all the way through, even in the Dark Tower. Yeah, I think I remember it mm -hmm. from, from the Dark Tower. So and it, it's something I was wondering that why ties the books it. together. Not that I fully understand it, because I haven't read The Dark Tower yet, but there's uh, websites online that have like all the connections of every single book Stephen King has written, and everything and how it fits in the multiverse of uh, The Dark Tower. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that would be actually interesting reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what about the ending? How did you feel about the ending? I felt that that was... it wasn't particularly surprising. It wasn't especially depressing. It did leave a lot of questions unanswered, like, like, so, bomb went off in Las, uh, Las Vegas. 
with Boulder really nearby. Did none of those people suffer from radiation poisoning or? I think he explained was that, that, that the, the mountains. Intervention that wouldn't. Wasn't there something about weather pushing it another direction? But he wondered which way the wind was going to blow, yeah. but that, that mm. but he also said the next line that doesn't mean anything. The bomb was called the hand of God. And one of the characters actually saw a giant hand. And he, so <laughs> electrical I, hand coming I'm down. going to assume that that God the divine didn't, intervention, God's decided the, the God didn't go, alright, let's blow them up and then kill everybody else. Wow. I missed the first time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um but no, I was a little disappointed with the ending for that part, because I was like, oh, oh, I was hoping for something better. But it had the trash can man sort of accidentally redeeming himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by trying to redeem himself in the wrong tool. way. Yeah. Yeah. He was trying to redeem himself to RF and ended up redeeming himself to Rational World. <laughs> so <laughs> and if I remember correctly, there were th well, it was a lot of three characters that went to Las Vegas to try to broker a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. There were originally four. four. Stu didn't make it because he broke his leg. Mm -hmm. Five, if you include the dog. The dog, okay. Well, I know there was one of them, was a priest or a minister? No, or sociologist. No? Sociologist, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're always telling you how to do things. Uh, um, yeah. And I remember being really sad when he was killed. Yes, mm -hmm. but not surprised either. No, that's the problem with the second half of the book. I didn't find I was very surprised by anything. By anything, yeah. But there were some really touching moments, um, like, I think it was Stu that saved the the mentally retarded, sorry, the mentally challenged boy. Other way around. Other way around? Tom saves Stu. The first time? In like the town? There's someone who saves Tom. Okay, I might be remembering the wrong someone thing. Someone who saves Tom. There's Nick. Nick. Who, I'm thinking of Nick. Oh yeah, who finds Tom alone yeah. and then... Uh, I was upset I really when liked Nick, Nick died. Yeah. 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 He, was, he was good sorts. Um, but I, I guess, I suppose it had to happen because he was too good. Really. Yeah. He was too good to live. Yeah. I think that's a trope. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I did like the parallels between more than just good and evil. There's also parallels between uh, reli that political systems and ideologically and a whole bunch of different things where they were opposed but you could see both sides. Even though the guy was pure evil and everything he did was completely evil, the Las Vegas, the way they worked was, wasn't always bad. Yeah, and uh, neither were they, yeah. actually. They the weren't, people. Yeah. yeah, the people weren't bad. Per se. Even though you could argue, well, they went to him instead of Mother Abigail, so... Yes, but going to the wrong place doesn't necessarily make you evil. It's what you do afterwards. Or how you get there, I suppose. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I liked how he uh, twisted Nadine's character so slowly. Yeah. From a, 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 a kind um, teacher of young children into this weird, really bizarre sex fiend almost that <laughs> it just Yeah. Well then That was very interesting I to my teenage liked, mind. Uh, yeah. I really liked how he did that. Mm -hmm. Because it, the the shifting was subtle. subtle enough that you just didn't you didn't go mm, whatever. Yeah it wasn't you, you like could two or three see, pages. Yeah. You could see it happening slowly and you understood why exactly. And uh, so it made me less it, I didn't hate Nadine for what she did because of the way that he, he wrote it. Um, I find a lot of big books like this get flowery just because they're like, I'm going to write 2,000 pages. <laughs> and they're especially worse with fantasy, but Stephen King and Erickson, for example, their sentences are clear, yeah, concise, they, their metaphors are quick. It's not 15 pages on the red feast or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, although I have to say, uh, part of the reason Maybe why I didn't get so much into Stephen Erickson is because he sent his sentences are maybe too abrupt. Sorry, you mean Stephen King? Sorry, yes. Sorry, okay. Stephen King. Erickson is it's the like, exact opposite. You didn't opposite. get into Stephen Erickson? What? Yeah. Erickson is the exact opposite. The reason why I didn't, I couldn't get so much into Stephen King is because they were too abrupt. There was mm. none of the the beautiful language that I would just love to read just because of the way it yeah. sounded, um, which I, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. So. Yeah. And I think that might also be the style for the book, because he's not always like that. Yeah. But the book was very abrupt and broad. 
Well, it was brusque, I think is the proper brisk, word. Brisk, yeah. No, not brisk. Wait, that's what, that's how I pronounce it. B R U S Q U E. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking brisk, it. like. <sighs> oh. <laughs> good yeah. <breeze. laughs> yeah. No, that's how we pronounce it. I could be completely wrong. We're gonna get angry comments in there. So could I. Any angry comments, direct them at her. <laughs> yeah, I can take it. <laughs> I say there. brusque because it's direct translation of French. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I did have a few problems with the book and how... I, granted, it was self-referential, so I'm fairly sure Stephen King was well aware of how much the eye was not really his eye, more of Tolkien's eye. Yes. I half expected him to describe it as lidless and wreathed in flame, <laughs> but it was just a red eye. It annoyed me. Really? Yeah, it irritated me. I read this before I read the, the uh, yeah, no. Lord of the Rings. So when I read Lord of the Rings, I was like, this seems familiar. Yeah. But it was never like, oh. Yeah, no, as soon as I, I heard about like the eye opening. But he like, wanted to do a Lord of the Rings good versus evil yeah, but type he's, of... In, in several books now, because in his yeah. Forward to the Dark Tower series, he says exactly the same thing. That his Dark Tower series was, was an homage to Lord of the Rings. Yes. So, it did, it irritated me a little too much. Hmm. Oh, sorry, it did. That's okay. <laughs> um, again, I read this when I was very young, yeah. like 15. Uh, okay. So it was the first book that I had read that didn't use euphemisms for... Um, for brand names. Oh. So they say McDonald's in this. They say Coca-Cola. Which say actually ABC. I quite like because it grounds it. Yeah, it makes it feel well. more real life than yeah. like Astra-Cola or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I know. I just like that. And it's something that's becoming more and more popular now, I've found, with newer authors. Because companies don't sue as much as long as you don't say like McDonald's killed you. In the book, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess. It's advertising for them, I suppose. Yeah, free advertising. Yeah, it's suppose. Okay. Um, what did you think about the metaphor at the end? The fact that RF, Randall Flagg, right? Yeah. Uh, he didn't die in the blast. He got transported somewhere else to start over. To start over, yeah. Sort of like evil can never be fully defeated. Really wow. obvious metaphor thing. Uh, well, again, it was Lord of Rings. not surprising. No. It was more or less what I expected. You're so jaded. I, yeah, I know. I'm, yeah, I'm terrible. It's okay. Um, but, uh, I mean, of course. Right? If, if but it would have been really easy for him to just kill him off. And he did in the original book. Yeah? Is that... It, there's no extra part at the end. Oh, so you just assume printing? he died. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, no. Um, I didn't assume he died, mostly because he just vanished. Yeah. So I sort of figured that he'd gone elsewhere. That was exactly my first thought when the clothes dropped. I'm like, oh, so he's no longer there. He's gone somewhere else. Mm, very uh, Star Wars. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, again, the, the second half of the book was pretty much expected. It wasn't anything new or mind-blowing or even as morbidly fascinating as the first half of the book. I really love the first half of this book a lot. Um, but the second half was meh. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, any uh, closing thoughts before we go into stars? I think it is an interesting study in character and weaving of stories. Because mm. it is not easy to have that many characters, even in a large book, yeah. and have it coherent and make sense. Yes. And I think his use of character is very good. Yes, I agree. No, I, 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 I like it. I, definitely. Okay, uh, star rating? Um, I would give it a 3.5. 3. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, same star rating, um, and for much the same reason. Uh, he did do the characters really well, and the stories interwove really well. Um, and I was very fond of Tom, to the, yeah. the guy who self-hypnotized to make connections. Um, he was such a sweetheart. Uh, so yeah, lots of great characters. Um, he did the breakdown of society so well. And it was so fascinating. Um, but the rest of the book was kind of meh. So, <laughs> for me at least. I find it interesting how our star ratings are like a point off. Yeah, well, no. For me, 3.5 is I really enjoyed it and I'm going to reread it. Oh, no, I would definitely.
constantly reread this. I'm, I'm not saying it's a terrible book by No, no, it's just for me to reread a thousand page book and I have to really like it. Oh, so yeah, I'm not scared of big books, so yeah. I'll look, I'll read them. <laughs> afraid of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the monster book of monsters. All right. No, you pick. You're the guest. Fine. I feel like I've been doing this a lot. You, yeah, you yeah. have. I'll do it. Do you? Uh, Artemis Fowl. Oh, yay! Yay, I like him. I've never read the book, but, hmm? Oh, book. Yeah, okay, so Artemis Fowl um, by Ian Colfer. I think that's it. Colfer? I always thought it was Ian Colfer. Ian Colfer. You're right, it is Ian Colfer. Darn Welsh. And no, that, I think that's Irish, actually, that spelling. <laughs> Irish, Welsh, Celtic. <laughs> Whatever. All right, uh, so that'll be the next book. We'll discuss that in a fortnight. If you would like to join in the conversation about The Stand, please leave a comment down below. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook and Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I am SM Carriere. You can find me on Twitter at SM Carriere. I'm Eric Damare. You can find me at Eric Damare. <laughs> because we're original. Yeah. <laughs> Our Twitter handles are just us. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Bye. What's that? Science! I kill you!